I believe that we should have many voices uh, and many debates. And Ben, you know, I'm not sucking up. Muscle tough to you on putting together a great event. And you have shown a, a public, uh, uh, well, pro bono publico. You've done this for the good of, of your community. And to bring in a troublemaker like me who's been irritating and give me an equal time, I salute you for that open mindedness. Thank you. Okay, the next question is what is happening to the Cree and Dene people? Well, um, that would be an opportunity for me to invite a Cree gentleman on stage to answer the question for me, actually. Uh, Danny, are you around somewhere? Yes. Get I've only got a couple of minutes, but uh, the kids came up to me in the middle and, and yeah. felt that not enough had been said, and instead of trying to speak for myself on this issue, why not here? let him speak for himself? <clears throat> My name is uh, Gitz, Gitz Crazy Boy. I'm a Blackfoot in Dene. I'm not Cree. Although they're awesome, so thank you. That's actually a compliment to call me Cree. Um, God. Thank you for allowing me. This is kind of unethical to allow me to jump up here um, Thank you. And, and do this. Uh, but I really feel that the indigenous voice is often, often misrepresented. We're kind of pushed off to the side. And um, we're dying in Fort Chip. The Athabasca Chippewan First Nation, the uh, Mikasu First Nation, which is Cree, and the Dene side are dying, but also the Metis and the non indigenous are caught up in the struggle as well. Uh, I'm here to tell you about a probable, out a probable outcome we're coming for, steadfast coming towards right now, and that's a direct action. And it's in reference to the oil sands industry and its relations or rather lack of communication to the First Nations people. How violent this direct action will be is actually up to all of you out here. Now, I'm gonna agree that shutting down the tar sands tomorrow is economic suicide to Canada. Um, that I'll actually say something kind of crazy that oil is a renewable resource for the lifespan of a rock. <laughs> but what's happening up in Fort Chip is our water is being contaminated. The Athabasca watershed. Our animals are sick. Um, the natural world around us that people have grown up around is dying. And we know that as First Nations people, our voices are not heard. We just, it's a fact. I mean, we've been talking about the residential schools, which is a form of genocide. Um, we were talking about this for like years and years and years, and saying it's, it's genocide. One was Canada and I went up to it. Jack Layton and uh, the NDP voiced Stephen Harper, and they're silently apology. It doesn't come from us, it comes it come from a white person. You talked earlier about the bile duct cancer, and you said two people had it. There's rare types of people, there's rare types of cancer that are happening up north. Never had before. The bile duct cancer, I, I shouted this earlier and some people were telling me to be quiet, which is cool, because I should have just waited. The bile duct cancer affects one in 100,000 people. So, you get 100,000 people, which is this population of McMurray taking all the camp workers and surrounding communities, bringing in McMurray, it's about 100,000 people. One unlucky person should get that bile duct cancer, Unfor but, or unfortunately they have that, but in the community of Fort Chip, which is around 1,500, two people have got it so far. Statistically speaking, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, nobody in Fort McMurray that I know of, living up there for about 15 years, has actually got it. When I talk about, uh, gen I said I said Holocaust, and you spoke really passionately against, like, you know, Holocaust. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was really culturally sensitive of you. No, I, I mean, like, when you said, and you spoke passionately about what Holocaust really is. The the residential schools is a form of Holocaust. The Indian Wars is a Holocaust. What's happening up north is an industrial genocide, and it is a holocaust. And all this has been, like, our history as indigenous peoples in form, or within Turtle Island has been wave after wave of genocide. This newest genocide, industrial genocide, is killing indiscriminately. It's all plant life, it's water life, it's people. That's why I call it a holocaust. Our, our classy, sacred... classy, your real class act. Actually, we're going to give you a chance to respond with yeah. equal time. Our, we have we have uh, teachings, we have philosophies that come from the earth, from the water, from the trees, and from the plants and animals. Sacred, sacred lessons that we pass on to our young, to respect it, to live in respect with all things, you, me, the earth, everything. 
The tar sands is adversely affecting these. And I'm not talking about like case studies that have been done since like the 60s or 70s in the, in the area. Our case studies are in time immemorial. We've been living off this land for I don't know how long. The Athabasca watershed is being poisoned right now. There was a time within 15 years ago where we could actually just hop in a canoe, paddle down the river, scoop up water and drink it. That doesn't happen now. We've seen a steady degree in the way the water tastes, the water level, even the smell that comes from it. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah one more minute. All right. Um, I've actually written a letter about this, and you, uh, you talk about um, human rights. Everyone has the right to live, liberty, and security of person. If you look at people that are caught up north, we're, 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 afraid to, like, we're afraid to drink the water, breathe the air, hunt the animals we've traditionally done for years and years and years and years. What do you call that then for a person who does live in fear in my community of going out and doing these things? They are playing a cancer roulette up north. There are people that have died, and I'm not going to say their names because I don't want a, a cheap applause for it. But if you really want, you can come up to my community, and I will take you to their graves, and I will take you to the families of the people that have died from cancer. I put this back on the population here. It's not going to come from Native people. This isn't going to happen. Um, the tar sands do set the environmental standards for the rest of Canada. My people are dying indiscriminately right now. It's up to each and every one of you members here to do something about it and get more educated on it. Learn both sides of the story, not just mine, but his as well. Okay. Who's your chief? Chief Allen Adam. Um, Would you like to see my in status? <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I didn't because I didn't. I didn't catch that. I don't think. Oh, you I said it was Dennis Sutherland. Sorry. Um, you know, I didn't play the race card, which is what we're seeing right here. Oh. But I will now. But I will now. You know, there is no industry in Canada that employs more Aboriginal people than the oil sands. And that's the direct employment of 1,600 people. And then in addition to the 1,600 direct employees, thousands of Aboriginals from Northern Alberta, not just Status Indians, but Métis and, 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 uh, and other Indigenous people, have received literally billions of dollars in income from Syncrude, Suncor, and others over the years. And they're not just make work, fake work jobs, like in other, in, in other places. And they're not professional activists who are trotted out because they're Indians. And let me tell you a story about Chief Al Lehman of the Beaver Lake Cree. Chief Al Lehman of the Beaver Lake Cree wears a suit to work, just like you and me. Except for when the Co-op Bank of the United Kingdom comes in. Once a year they come in and give him a check for a quarter million bucks. And in return, Chief Al Lehman has to put on his feathered headdress and go to London dressed like a cartoon Indian and shake his moneymaker for all the Fleet Street press. And Chief Al Lehman, for a quarter million dollars a year, allows himself to be used as a prop by the co-op bank so can, they can say to their investors, look how ethical we are. We're giving a quarter million dollars to Chief Al Lehman. Look, he's going to dance for you like Pocahontas. And, and we're going to put him on display. We're going to have him dress in his headdress. He never does when he goes to work, except for when he's on show for show and tell. But then, you know what? Here's the, hypo here's the hypocrisy about it, the co-op bank. They actually own shares in oil sands companies, in all of them, in fact. And you know what really drives me nuts? When the, the thousands of aboriginals who have, for the first time in their history, a real job that pays real money, are told, go back to the reserve, are told, go back to the reserve, and not just by professional Indians, but by folks like my friend Ben, who say, oh, there'll be other work, sure. Hey, you Newfoundlanders, there'll be another tax program coming along soon. If the COD's not back, we'll give you a hand up. Hey, Aboriginals, who for the first time ever have a great paying job that treats them with respect. And you know what? Sons and now, fathers and now sons are going to work together. And you can earn $100,000 there. And so many thousands of Aboriginals have found for the first time ever a way to earn their way up instead of be on their back begging. And you, sir, would sentence your own people to unemployment. Shame on you. At least, unlike Chief Al Lane, you didn't do a song and dance because you weren't paid to do so like the co-op bank pays Chief Lehman. Yeah.